You are God's creature, designed for glory. You are not designed for shame. Returning back in Jesus' name, I rebuke the devil. God is a God of mercy. When you understand that God is a God of mercy, you are a creature of intention. God created you intentionally. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. You are designed to be the best. You are set up to beat the rest. You cannot fail. You shall surely manifest in your divine place in the precious name of Jesus. Welcome to Movement of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas, USA. You are welcome. Movement of Empowerment is a revolutionary and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Listen to me. Everyone created by God has a place in destiny. You have a place of glory. You have a place of honor. You have a place of dominion. However, you cannot fully manifest and be resultful in your place until you are empowered. Until you are empowered, you will continue to be overpowered. It takes being empowered to be able to take what has been provided for you and to fully manifest in your place of glory. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 to 8, God needed to empower man for him to be able to occupy the place that he has prepared for him. There is a place prepared for you by God, but he knows you cannot fully manifest in that place until you are empowered. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 to 8, the Bible says, And the Lord formed a man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Until God breathed into him, he did not become a living soul. That word breathed into him, God, God empowered him in order to become. So empowerment positions you to become what you are designed to become and command what you are ordained to command on the earth. Now the Bible says in verse 8, which is the next verse, And the Lord planted a garden, and he put the man whom he had formed. So when God formed him, he empowered him in order to be able to fully manifest in his place on the earth. I know today that God is going to empower you. The word of God is coming your way. It will empower you to break through. It will empower you to take your place. It will empower you to become who God has designed you to become. By the word of the Lord coming your way today, you will change level dramatically. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer be where you used to be. God will reposition you to command great results in, the, in life in the precious name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Now, thank you for tuning in today again. I am so grateful. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for the mails you send in to us. It is highly appreciated. May the Lord continue to bless you, multiply you, increase you, and surprise you in the precious name of Jesus. It is time to be empowered afresh today. And I want you to know something, that God's word is a channel for empowerment. God's word is one of God's provision for empowering his people to put them in their place of destiny fulfillment. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5 and verse 17, that as Jesus was teaching, the power of God was there to heal. The power of God was available to heal. So when God's word is going or is being, is being taught or is being broadcasted, the power of God is available. But it is many, as many as will connect with God's word that will connect with the power of God's word. So where you see God's word, you see the power of God. I know today that God's word and his power will rest upon you mightily to heal you. Every Everyone sick, you will be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, you want to get someone on this broadcast right now. You want to invite your friend. You want to call the family. Now, get someone, if anyone that is sick, get them right now on the, on, on the broadcast. Because as God's word is coming, the power of God will be flowing in to bring forth healing in all areas of life. And I know you shall surely not remain the same after this broadcast in the precious name of Jesus. Now, before I go into the word of the Lord today... I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. I want you to come. Let's fellowship together. Let's celebrate Jesus together. Let's, let's together give him all the glory. 
The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, life-transforming, multicultural church of God. We are founded on the Word of God. We are based on God's Word. Uh, we are based on the ministry of prayer and prophetic manifestation all around the clock, any day, any time. You are connecting with God's power at the Empowerment Center. I want to see you in any of our services. The address is right on the screen scrolling. Uh, I want to see you. We have services on Sunday. Uh, 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Sundays, and on Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. You don't want to miss any of the service because God will surely touch you and visit you, and you will not remain the same again. It is a place where we come together to express the love of God, to share the love of God together, and we also want to express God's love to you as we have you come visit us in any of our services. The Lord bless you as you come in the precious name. Of Jesus and if you are need more information you can go to the website or you call the number on the screen we shall surely attend to you if you need direction or more information God bless you as you call the number in the name of Jesus you can call in for prayers right now even as the broadcast is going on you shall surely be blessed as you call whatever be the issue you can go to the website drop your prayer request or call the number on the screen and, and, and someone will be there to pray with you and I know definitely that testimony will show forth in your life in the pressure name of Jesus. Now in case you are just tuning in, this is still Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley and I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. Moment of Empowerment is a revolutionary broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Alright, now today I shall continue my teaching on when God is with you. In my last broadcast, I started a teaching, and this is going to be the part two, that is entitled, When God is with you. I want you to understand that God wants to be with you. We discovered in our last broadcast that God desires to be with his people. Jesus came essentially as an evidence that the whole agenda of God for us is an unbroken fellowship. God wants to have divine fellowship, to be with his people, to manifest through them, to manifest in them, and to manifest with them. That is the agenda of God. His name shall be called Emmanuel. And the meaning of that word is God with us. So one of the names that Jesus was giving was Emmanuel to portray to us, to show us in reality that God wants to be with us. I know today that by the reason of this broadcast, God will be with you. God will be for you. God will be in you. God will be around you. God will be all over you in the precious name of Jesus. We also discovered that if God will be with you, then you must be with God. If God will be with you, then you must be with God. Now, in case you missed that broadcast, you can watch the read broadcast on our website, www.wordrevival.org. You can watch the read broadcast on that website. Just click on Empowerment TV. You can watch it. Now, today, let's continue as we look at several other revelations that we were looking at in the last broadcast from Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. And today we want to start looking at what do you enjoy when God is with you? What, what do you have access to when God is with you? Acts of Apostles, chapter 7, and verse 9 to 10. The Bible says, And the patriarch moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. They sold him, but God was with him. And I mean, I tell you something, that it does not matter what the people are doing against you. When God is with you, he will not allow you to work against you. He can turn what they meant for your evil to, be, to work for your good. That was what happened to Joseph. Now, the Bible says in verse 10, what happened when God was with him? Number one, and God delivered him out of all his afflictions. So what do you enjoy when God is with you? Number one. When God is with you, he delivers you. When God is with you, he delivers you. Verse 10 said, when God was with him, he delivered him out of all his affliction. He does not just deliver you from some, he delivers from all of them. No matter how long, thick, tough, and stubborn the affliction had been, when God is with you, he delivers you. God is a God of total liberty and deliverance. 
when he's with you, he rescues you from all form of affliction, addiction, oppression, depression, confusion, anything. Whatsoever thing that is ordained to bring you down, whatever is not in his program for your life, when God is with you, he delivers you from it. He delivers you from every form of affliction. He delivers you from every form of confusion when God is with you. We saw in the story of Joseph that God was with him. He delivered him from death. His brothers planned to kill him. The Bible says, and they said, here comes the dreamer. Let us kill him, and we will see what will happen to his dream. But God delivered him. They put him in the pit. God delivered him. They sold him to slavery. God delivered him to slavery. God delivered him from slavery. Instead of him becoming a slave, he became a master in his master's house. Come on now. When God is with you, he turns what they meant against you to work to your favor. He turns your oppression to promotion. He turns your frustration to elevation. When God is with you, he turns evil around for good. We also saw that when, because God was with Joseph, he delivered him from prison. The wife of his master accused him wrongly, but he was put in prison. But because God was with him, he brought him out from prison. Because God was with him, he put him in palace. Somebody's watching me right now. God is with you. He's bringing you out from the prison of life. He's putting you in your palace in the name of Jesus. You will no longer remain where the situation of life wants you to be. God is with you. He will deliver you. He will rescue you. He will deliver you from sin. He will deliver you from Satan. He will deliver you from shame in the name of Jesus. So when God is with you, you come out from anything you have been in, even if you are there wrongly. Because God was with Joseph, Bible says he delivered him. Let me show you how committed God himself is to delivering his people when he's with them. God committed himself all through his word that no matter what my people is passing through, once I am with them, I'm bringing them out. If you have your Bible, look into Jeremiah chapter 15. And I want to pray from the scripture because I, had, I sense an unction of prayer to pray right now. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20 to 21. Now, if you are in any form of affliction, you are in any form of addiction, you are in any form of op oppression, you are in tough situation, you are in a situation that you desire to be delivered. Now, get ready right now because as this word is coming your way, God's power will come over you live and direct. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20 to 21. The Bible says, God speaking said, And I will make thee unto these people a fenced, broken wall, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. They shall fight against you, but they cannot prevail against you. Now, it doesn't matter if they are fighting. Let them continue to fight. But God said they aren't going to prevail. Situation may come, but they aren't going to be the end. Look at what God said. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. So God has committed himself by his word to save you and to deliver you if he is with you. He said they will fight against you, but they will not prevail. Therefore, I pray for you, everyone watching me, whatever has been fighting against you, fighting against your marriage, I command today they will not prevail. The gate of hell will not prevail against you. Sickness will not prevail against you. Poverty will not prevail in your life in the name of Jesus. He said, I will deliver you. I will save you. Look at verse 21. He said, and I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. God is so committed that he specifically said, as part of my commitment, I'm going to deliver you from the hand of the wicked once I am with you. I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. I saw from the scripture that there are some hands God needs to deliver you from. Some hands. He said, hand of the wicked. Hand of the wicked. That's what means oppression of the wicked, activities of the wicked, accomplishment of the wicked. He also said, I will redeem you out of the hand of the terrible. So there are those called wicked. There are, there is, there are forces also called terrible. And God said, I'm going to bring you out from their hand. I don't know where you are today, but in the name of Jesus, lick to under apostolic authority and by scriptural illumination, I prophesy the hand of the Lord will come for you. It will deliver you from the hand of the wicked. You are coming out from the hand of the oppressor. You are coming out from the hand of sickness. Come out from the hand of the terrible. In the name of Jesus, whatever you're supposed not to be in, that you are struggling in, God will bring you out from there. Come out from sickness. Come out from trouble. Come out from affliction. Come
come out from shame. I see somebody coming out from prison right now. You are coming out from the bed of sickness in the name of Jesus. Come out from that depth right now. He said, I will deliver you from the hand of the wicked. Every hand of the wicked upon you. Every hand of the wicked upon your family. Every accomplishment of the wicked in your home. I command them broken right now. In the name of Jesus, I withdraw the hand of the devil. I withdraw the hand of the devil. I withdraw the hand of sickness. I withdraw the hand of shame. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the terrible will no longer perform their enterprise against your life. In the name of Jesus, God will deliver you. God will rescue you. In the name of Jesus. Come on now. I want you to call the number on the screen right now. Calling for prayer. I sense apostolic prayer unction flowing right now. Calling for prayers right now. If you are sick, call the number. Whatever be the situation, calling for prayers, the power of God will come over you. I don't know where you are, but when God is with you, he will deliver you. He will deliver you. He delivered him from all his affliction. Every affliction in your body, I command your deliverance right now. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free from addiction. Be free from trouble. Be free from torment. Somebody is watching me now. You have been having difficulty sleeping. You have been suffering from it a long time. Get ready because I see God settling you, delivering you, liberating you. In the name of Jesus, I declare God will deliver you from cancer. I declare God will deliver you from appetition. In the name of Jesus, be free from high blood pressure. Whatever be the problem, that body of that leg, you are having pain with your leg, be free right now. In the name of Jesus. So when God is with you, he delivers you. And this is what devil knows. Devil knows that if only God can be with you and you can be with God, he will always deliver you. That's why he's always looking for ways to bring you away from God, to get you out of God's presence. Because when you leave God's presence, God's presence leaves you. When you leave God's presence, God's presence automatically leaves you. So the devil knows much about it. That's why he's trying to take you away from the presence of God, trying to make you do things that would take the presence of God away from you. I can tell you when God is with you, it's a lifetime investment. It's an asset. You've got nothing to lose when God is with you. That was why the devil cannot attack Job because God was with him. Until there was an opening. When God intentionally took his hand away, then he had asses. But I know suddenly, suddenly, everyone watching me right now, listen to me very clearly. Whatever is taking the presence of God away from you can lead you to your destruction. Whatever is taking you away from God's presence can bring you to oppression. It can lead to your affliction. But when God is with you, he rescues you. Number two thing, what do we enjoy when God is with you? From the scripture we read in Acts of Apostles chapter 7, now we are looking at verse 10. Bible says God delivered him from all his affliction. Number two, what did God do for him again? And gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh. Favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, all because God was with him. When God is with you, what do you enjoy? You enjoy uncommon favor, irresistible favor. Undeniable favor, unstoppable favor. The presence of God is with the presence of God with you is an activator of favor for you. When God is with you, it activates favor concerning your life. God's favor will cover your error. It will color your efforts. God's favor will always cover your errors and color your efforts. It brings you to become the best in the midst of the rest. You may not naturally be the best, but when God's favor is upon you, he sets you ahead of others. He makes you the best in the midst of the rest. God's favor was so much upon for Joseph because God was with him. All through the Bible, going from scripture to scripture, I saw that everywhere Joseph went, God was with him. And everywhere the Bible says that God was with Joseph, he was enjoying favor everywhere, every angle. So when God is with you, his favor will be upon you. Uncommon favor will be with you. And uncommon favor is a door opener. Uncommon favor will relinquish hard labor. Uncommon favor will restore your wasted labors of yesteryears. Look at what happened in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 to 4. When God was with Joseph, he brought him into favor. Genesis 39, verse 2 to 12. We want to look at some things in the story of Joseph to let us understand that when God is with you, you enjoy uncommon favor. Genesis 39, verse 2 to 4, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. When God is with you, you prosper. You don't fail. 
If you are with God and God is with you, you enjoy what God enjoys because part of God comes on you. The Bible says, and it was in the house of his master, the Egyptian, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. I want to let you know, when God is with you, it always shows. The master saw it was visible. It was seeable. <laughs> the master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You know why he was prospering? Because God was making it to prosper because God was with him. Verse 4, and Joseph found grace, and some version says favor, in his sight, and he served him. He made him overseer over his house, and he put everything in his hand. He was supposed to be a slave. But look at it, he became a commander. He became a commander all because God was with him. I can tell you something. When God is with you, he makes all you do to work. He silences the oppression of the devil and positions you to enjoy the blessedness everywhere. We also saw in the same scripture, Genesis 39, verse 20 to 23, that even when he went to prison, God was with him there. I, I don't know if you are watching me from the prison or you are watching me from a place where it's secluded and things are not working for you. And you think, no, 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 God cannot be with me. God was with Joseph in the prison. You know why? Because he carried God there. He was with God in the prison. He did not allow what he was passing through to make him lose focus of God. Don't allow what you are passing through to shift you away from God. The Bible says in Genesis 39, verse 20 to 23, and Joseph's master took him, put him in prison, and the Bible says, verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph. So God can go with you into the prison, wherever you are. <laughs> and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all that the prisoners that were in the prison, whatsoever they did there, he was the doer. He was the commander in prison because God was with him. The, prison, the, the, the keeper of the prison never looked at anything because it was in, in Joseph's hand. The Bible says, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. This is the second time we are seeing it in scripture, that when God is with you, he makes you to prosper. He was supposed to be a prisoner, but look at what happened. Even in prison, he was a promoter. He was a commander. He was a result generator. He was a head. He was com controlling others in prison. There are people he met there. But because God was with him, God put him ahead. When God is with you, he puts you ahead of those you met on ground by favor. Someone is watching me right now. Favor that will lead to promotion is coming your way. Favor that will reposition you. God will show you in the name of Jesus. But if God will be with you, there is something you must do. Joseph took God to the prison. God was with him. He entered the prison with him. <laughs> when you are a lover of God, God can go to any point with you. When you are a lover of God, God can go to any point with you. Even when you are passing through deep water, he will be with you there. God was with Joseph in the prison. Now, I know you desire that God be with you. Let me share with you one more thing that can make God to be with you. I saw from scripture that if you want God to be with you, then you must be a worshiper. You must be a worshiper. Yeah, you heard me. You must be a genuine, committed, addicted, and, and devoted worshiper. Why? Because he's one of the cheapest routes to getting God to be with you. After you are saved, then you'll be a worshiper to get God with you any day, anytime, anywhere. How did I know? Because the Bible said so that God is looking for some set of people. The Bible says, John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, the hour has come, now is the hour. The true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the, such the Father seek it. To worship him. So God is looking for worshippers. When you are a worshipper, he connects with you. He magnetizes you. Your life magnetizes him. That is who Jews, that David was a worshipper. That was why he said, I don't care. Even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. Because I'm not going anywhere without you. If you want God to be with you every day, everywhere, any day, anytime, and you want to consistently enjoy favor and enjoy his deliverance, then you be a worshipper. Be committed to worship. Live a lifestyle of worship. Personal worship, congregational worship. Do not leave the assembly of the people of God. Now someone is watching me now. Certain things have made you to leave the presence of God. 
You have left the place of worship. Someone is listening to me. You have even left the church. You got tired. But you understand something. If God will be with you, then you must be a worshiper. You must find yourself in his presence consistently and continuously. I want to pray with you today. You are saying, Pastor, I hear you. I know I need to be with God, but I have left the place of God. I've lost fellowship with him. I've left his presence. I don't even, anything of God does not touch my heart any longer. Maybe you have been distracted by certain things. God is reaching out to you today because he wants to be with you and he wants you to fellowship with him. I want to pray with you. You are saying, Pastor, I've left church. I don't want to do anything with church people again. I can tell you church is not about the people. It's about God. Until you start learning to look beyond the people and focusing on Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith will continue to be frustrated. Church is about God. It's about him. Jesus is the head. And we come to fellowship with him, to love him, to meet with him. I want to pray with you. Because God wants you back in his presence. God wants you back in his presence. You are saying, Pastor, I want to come back to God. Now I'm praying for you right now. Wherever you heard, say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you afresh today. I will surrender my life to you. I want to live in fellowship, in love, and in communion. Accept me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to see you back in church. I want to see you back in God's presence. Because when God is with you, he delivers you and he gives you favor. Glory be to God. I'm going to continue this series of teaching in my next broadcast by the grace of God as we continue to look what happens when God is with you. Now, if you desire to listen to more life-transforming messages and prayers, I want you to connect with our 24 hours online radio. We are privileged. We have a radio online, internet radio. Uh, the banner will be on the screen shortly. You can connect with Revelation any day, any time on our 24 hours online radio on prayingradio.org. The website is www.prayingradio.org. Connect with Revelation any day, any time. You can, if you don't have an internet connection, you can call the number 401-347-0153. If you call that number, you will be on the radio, 401-347-0153. You listen to the radio any day, any time, 24 hours. It is well with you. I pray for you. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Everyone sick be healed in the name of Jesus. I decree all over your destiny. The hand of the enemy will not be upon you. Favor will speak for you. Go out in favor. Come in with favor. Sleep with favor. Live in favor. I bind arthritis. I command high blood pressure to be normalized. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. It is well with you in Jesus' name. I want to see you at the Empowerment Center this Sunday. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Till I come your way, stay empowered and be blessed in Jesus' name.